This episode is brought to you in part by Hybrid Light. Durable, environmentally friendly, and guaranteed for life. Visit hybridlight.com. And Sheffield Financial. Specialized equipment financing for work, play, and everything in between. Visit sheffieldfinancial.com. 5 a.m. can't come soon enough for folks like these. There's more than just a job to do so they hit their knees. They sure take pride in everything they do. There's no challenge that they won't work through. So they tirelessly keep going on. They work their fingers to the bone They spend way too much time in field and away from home You can be sure they know what all this hard work is for So now we honor you as legends Legends of the outdoors Hey folks, welcome to the first edition of the Legends of the Outdoors TV. I'm here with my co-host, Abby Joe. Abby, today we're gonna to be fishing with one of the greatest crappie fishermen in Mississippi. I'm excited. I'm telling you, this guy can catch them, and I'm excited about getting to go with him. So. Yeah, me too, I'm excited to learn some stuff. Hey, there he is right now, Abby. Hey, Les. Hey, Garrett. Man, great to see hey, you. To see I you wanna to introduce Brett. you to my co-host Abby Joe. Hey Hi. Abby, nice how are you? Good, good are to you? see you. Hey, thank you for inviting us to come down here to North Mississippi. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing this morning. Well, we're going to we're going to have fun, man. We uh, we're going to be out there power trolling and uh, trying to catch some big old slabs. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, great, man. I know y'all got some big crappie here. I've heard about the 13 and 14 inch crappie uh, here in in the big four of North Mississippi. I've always wanted to come down here and fish. This is on my bucket list. So I can't wait to get out there. Thank you so much for taking us. Uh, tell me a little bit about Como, Mississippi. Well, Como is just south of Memphis, so you can kind of be easy to get into the Memphis area and come straight down 55. Uh, we're about uh, 35 miles south of Memphis. Uh, Como is just a great little country community. I live about six and a half miles out towards Sardis Lake. We are right in the middle of the big four. You got uh, Arkabutla, you got Sardis, you got Enid, you got Grenada. A uh, little town of Como is pretty cool. It's got a great steakhouse. It's got great little restaurants, and uh, it's called Restaurant Row. So uh, I think it's kind of cool when people can come in and hang out, good places to go eat, uh, if we're not eating at, uh, at the crappie compound. There you go. Well, I tell you what, great food, great friends, great crappie fishing. It don't get any better than this. I'm ready, man. Thank you for having <laughs> yes, us. Let's sir. go get this boat ready. Yes. We set out to catch a few slabs here on beautiful Lake Arca Butler, where Les is excited to teach us a new crappie fishing technique. Well, new to us anyways, Les has been using this technique for years, and let me tell you, it's a great way to catch monster crappie. Uh, Les, tell us a little bit about this technique we're using, because I've never fished this way, and I've crappie fished all my life, but I, I can see myself really enjoying doing this, even on Kentucky Lake where I'm from. Gary, this is called power troll. My dad actually was one of the founders or, or, or starters of power trolling years ago. He and mom fished the Crappie USA, Crappie Masters tournaments uh, 35, 40 years ago. He uh, start, kind of started this technique. It's one that I learned at an early age. Absolutely my favorite way of fishing. It's a lot of fun because you don't have to fool with any matters. Yeah. Uh, you come out here and you get a great bait like crappie magnet with those pro series and, and you stick a little curly tail. Lots of times we use the Charlie Brewer sliders, which I like. You're trying to stay as far away from structure and cover as you possibly can. That kind of adds another aspect to where you can fish and where you want to go, right? Absolutely. Uh, and, and this time of year, most of those fish have moved away from structure. They're out in the opens, they're running off these, and if you, you kind of notice on the graph, we're running those contour lines where we're, we're just kind of on the outside edge of uh, a big flat and uh, we're kind of staying right out in about 16 foot of water uh, kind of follow the shad this time of year you just go where the fish are man i tell you 
tell you what, you're not wrong. Uh, we hadn't been out here very long and already caught some. And here where we're fishing, the fish, the crop you've got to be 12 inches in length. So I'm gonna let you measure that guy and see if he'll go in the cooler. He could become supper for tonight. Every lake has a different set of rules for fishing. And on Lake Arca Butler, any crappie under 12 inches must be thrown back for future generations to enjoy. Stick around and we'll be right back with Legends of the Outdoors TV. Tired of pushing that old lawnmower? Don't go another season without the equipment you need to do the jobs that are important to you. At Sheffield Financial, we specialize in helping our customers get what they need. The easy application and fast approval process makes financing your outdoor power equipment easy. Don't go another season without the equipment you need. Check out SheffieldFinancial.com today. Hey, Abby, I want to tell you about a really neat contest that we're running on Legends of the Outdoors TV for our sponsor, Hybrid Lights. Anyone that's watching our show after episode six can go on hybridlight.com and say, I seen the light or I found the light. Yeah. Every episode, we're going to have a hybrid light somewhere in that episode. And when you see it, you click on hybridlight.com and tell them that you seen the light and where you seen it at. And that will automatically put you in for a contest where one winner will win a great box full of hybrid light products. Wow, everyone's is lucky. <laughs> they are lucky, and I tell you what, this is some of the neat products. You can charge your phone with these. Wow. They charge, most of their products charged by solar or through a, plugging them into the wall through a USB port or just a straight plug. So hybridlights.com, click on it and find out all about the Legends of the Outdoor TV. I found the light. This segment is brought to you in part by Mossy Oak. No one knows hunters like Mossy Oak. Visit mossyoak.com. And Frog Togs. Breathable, affordable, and lightweight. Visit frogtogs.com. Hey folks, welcome to the inaugurator issue of the Legends of the Outdoors TV show. I've got my co-host, Abby Joe, and you may recognize some of Abby Joe's family. Abby Joe is the granddaughter of David Hale of Night and Hale Game Calls. We're out here fishing today with Mr. Les Smith from Mississippi, and I tell you what, this guy knows how to catch crappie on these lakes down here just south of Memphis, Tennessee. We're proud to be down here, but Abby, I know you wanted on this first episode to talk to me about how I created the Legends of the Outdoors and my career in the outdoors and how all that come about. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to ask you, um, when did you become a guide? Well, I started guiding part-time when I was 22 years old, and uh, I guided part-time for many, many years. I worked at a factory. I actually made kitty litter and tidy cats. So in 1991, the factory that I worked at closed its doors and uh, everybody else wants the unemployment line and I was lucky enough to go hunting and fishing. That's awesome. I'm gonna get him with a net or you want me to bring him in? Oops. All right, another good crappie comes to the boat. All right, hold that there. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, what'd you call these baits, Les? Those are the uh, Crappie Magnet Pro Series fence pins. And that's a Charlie Brewer slider underneath there, the little curly tail, just the one with a little fire tail on it. Yeah. And those are Crappie Catching Dudes. Once my career started to expand and I started to do a lot of uh, magazine television stuff with other individuals and guiding a lot, my career really took hold. And then in 2001, computers were starting to get big and, and people were starting to buy home com computers. And I had guided a lot of people from the Country Music Hall of Fame and Baseball Hall of Fame, Football Hall of Fame. 
And I looked around and I couldn't find a Hall of Fame for folks in the outdoors industry. So Cindy and I was standing in the kitchen and Les will find this very funny because uh, I looked at her and I said, you know, honey, there's not a Hall of Fame in the anywhere that I can find on the internet or anywhere that has to do with people in the outdoors industry as a whole. I said, there's the Boone and Croc, Crockett and there's Pope and Young and there's the uh, places for people that have caught big fish, but there's not a Hall of Fame. I said, somebody ought to do something about that. And I was kind of fussing a little bit in my own way. And she looked at me and she said, well, aren't you somebody? <laughs> the next day we went to a restaurant and we were sitting there eating. And I said, honey, we're going to start the Legends of the Outdoors Hall of Fame. And she said, what is that? And I, I said, well, we're going to induct people, nominate people, induct people from all walks of the outdoors industry, you know, from outdoor riders, TV show hosts, outdoor guides, product manufacturers. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about the first year. I've heard a little bit from my grandfather and from Harold, but tell me um, how that came about with your leap of courage and um, how many people you inducted. Well, we inducted eight people that year, and we held it at my hometown of, of Paris, Tennessee, at Paris Land State Park. And uh, that year, Harold Knight, David Hale, Bill Dance, Roland Martin, Earl Bentz, Jimmy Holt, and Eli Haydell all went into the Hall of Fame. So there was eight of them, and we also inducted Mr. Charlie Brewer Sr. of Charlie Brewer Slider Company posthumously. He had passed on a couple of years before that. And we did the induction ceremony, unless we had about 120 people there, and I think I'd given about 40 tickets away to all my buddies just so I could have some more folks there. But, you know, uh, when you take on something like this, you're worried that something, nobody will show up. So I kind of patted my hand a little bit with all my buddies and Roland Martin stood on the stage and I hope he don't get upset about me telling this, but when I seen tears flowing down his face, I realized we had something really special because this was the first time out of all the accolades that all these guys had received over their career, it was the first time that any of them had ever been acknowledged by their peers. And that night I realized right then that God had given us something very, very special. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Legends of the Outdoors TV right after these messages. Folks, I want to tell you about a brand new reel and gun oil created by my friend Jeff Milam called 80 Blow. Jeff, tell me a little bit about the product. 80 Blow is a product that's built to really withstand Mother Nature. Anything it throws at it, minus 80 degrees on the cold side and uh, up to 465 high side. Really, if you like to uh, hunt cold weather or fish in cold weather, it's an excellent product. 80 Blow gun and reel oil. You gotta have this if you hunt and fish. This segment is brought to you in part by BNM Poles, the leading crappie pole in the world. Visit bnmpoles.com. And Vortex Optics. Life happens, which is why Vortex products come with an unlimited lifetime warranty. Visit vortexoptics.com. We spent the week at Les Smith's Crappie Compound where we ended each day with a great food and even better company. We were truly blessed by Les and his wife's hospitality during our stay in Como, Mississippi. And I'll tell you, you've got to check this place out. Man, I'll tell you what, this is one of the prettiest places I've ever been. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, Gary, it's, it's a pleasure, man. Uh, just uh, made some good memories here over the years and uh, glad to have you guys. Absolutely. Well, you got to tell me the story of this place because this is, like I said, it's beautiful. I know you call it the compound. I call it paradise now that I've been here. And, and I hope to come back, but tell me a little bit about how you developed this place. Gary, yeah, over the years, it's uh, this was actually my hunting camp. We uh, lived uh, about four and a half, five miles north of here um, on a, another place that we sold a couple of years ago. We moved over here full time, uh, and now it's our permanent residence, but uh, 
that we've uh, just kind of built this thing and uh, we've added on a whole bunch since we moved over here. But uh, when we originally built it, it was just for our buddies uh, to come hang out, fish, hunt. Uh, we've got a farm behind here uh, that we deer hunt, turkey hunt. We're right on a beautiful, just this side of Sardis Lake. Uh, just out east of Como, Mississippi, and just a just a great location right in the middle of the Big Four. Uh, built this place just to have fun, and uh, uh, we've uh, over the years met so many people just like you. Uh, you come in, you you meet you guys, uh, uh, just make some great memories, and uh, I kind of tell everybody if we uh, when they come in and leave, and say, man, we'll keep a light on for you. So uh, we've got our bunkhouse out here. Um, which that bunkhouse, we call it the bunkhouse. It's got a big, huge man cave area in there that, uh, you know, you can sit, watch TV, you got its own cooking area, but got workout equipment, uh, place to sit and comfort. And uh, we've got um, uh, bunk houses out there with that uh, we can sleep 12 people in 12 beds. We've got four bedrooms, two baths. Uh, so it kind of gives everybody a little room to move, move around and be a little comfortable. Um, this is our main cabin here, um, and this is kind of where Los and I uh, live uh, permanently now. So we've we've got our own separate quarters, and got the man cave out there. And people want to come in for the weekend, hang out, and fish, and hunt, and, and just have uh, a good time. Just have a good time. That's what we do. Yeah. Well, you got to tell me, you know, this kitchen that you've built out here underneath this pavilion, right on tacked onto the house could be in a country living magazine or something like that. So you got to tell me, how'd you come up with the creative idea of building this outdoors kitchen? You know, Gary, we wanted, when we moved over full time and we're always entertaining. So it's always somebody here, you know, and so we wanted something like this uh, to where when everybody kind of comes in, you get out here, you can cook, you can entertain. Uh, you got a fire pit right there behind you. Uh, got the uh, big outdoor kitchen. Uh, but I cook anything you want to cook over there, uh, which you know we've had some pretty good meals the last oh, couple of nights. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, having a com uh, complex like this and and the warm welcome that you and Miss Lois has given us uh, on this trip, I I can guarantee you, partner, you are never going to be lonely. So uh, listen, thank you once again for having us. You bet. Wonderful place. Wonderful people. Great memories. Yeah. I can't thank you enough. You bet, Gary. Hey, Abby, you know, the one thing that I really love the most about our induction ceremony this year was getting to go to the venue that we held the banquet at. Yeah, it was awesome. That Bass Pro Shop was huge. <laughs> yeah, it was in the John A. and Jenny Morris Convention Center, the Wonders of Wildlife Museum, and the aquarium all right there is something for the whole family to do. Yeah. Not to mention getting to go to the granddaddy of all Bass Pro Shop stores, the one in Springfield, Missouri. And uh, what, a, what a great venue to hold the Legends Outdoors Hall of Fame induction ceremony and banquet. And we're looking forward to being back again next year where we'll be inducting a whole brand new class of individuals from all walks of the outdoors industry. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. And listen, and, uh, these crappie have been biting out here. They have, yeah. And uh, you've, got a, you've got a little chore to do though. <laughs> you, I, I'm one up on you now because I've got the biggest one in the boat. You are, and, uh, you better send some luck my way. You've got the most though. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, there's something to be said for that. We're gonna eat because you've been catching the fire out of crappie. So. <laughs> We're going to have a good meal tonight. Uh, you're going to get to taste some of my jalapeno hush puppies. And I think Mr. Les is going to cook coffee. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have a great time. So let's get back to fishing. Awesome, let's do it. Folks, join us in just a few minutes as we come right back with Legends of the Outdoor TV.
Hey folks, I want to introduce you to a brand new product created by my friend Steve Mosley. Steve, BioProGreen was created by you. Tell us a little bit about what it does and why. BioProGreen is made from a specialized group of products that helps enhance your food plot. It increases the protein, it increases the biomass, and it will help draw wildlife to your food plot. BioProGreen will enhance your food plots and help bring wildlife to your property. This segment is brought to you in part by Paris Henry County Chamber of Commerce. For more information, visit parisTNChamber.com. And Mossberg. Safety and safe firearm handling is everyone's responsibility. Visit Mossberg.com. gravy around that thing. That'll be good. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to catch some down through here bigger than that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, I'm going to go catch right here. Hey folks, welcome back to Legends of the Outdoors TV. I'm your host, Gary Mason. I'm here with Abby Joe and Mr. Les Smith. And Abby, I know you wanted to talk about the second year that we did the induction. So go ahead and ask me what you yeah, want to ask Yeah, so me. who all did you induct the second year and where did you um, held it, hold it at? Well, we held it at Paris Landing State Park, right near my hometown again, and that was the last year that we held it there. After that, we moved it to Nashville, but we moved the Hall of Fame and induction ceremony to Nashville. But last that year, we had Mike McLemore, Johnny Morris, Mr. Sock Clay, one of the premier outdoor writers and photographers of our outdoors industry. Uh, and we had uh, several more folks, but one that was near and dear to my heart was Wade Bourne. Wade passed on here. Uh, in the last few years, but uh, Wade had hosted Ducks Unlimited uh, Television and had also been a, one of the premier outdoor writers of our generation. And then Miss Brenda Valentine. Brenda and I grew up together, and of course I know you know Brenda very well. And as a matter of fact, Paris Landing State Park, Brenda had been a waitress at the state park where she was inducted into the National wow. Hall of Fame. So that was really a, a true honor for me to get to induct her uh, there in her own hometown. And, that was our second year and once again, uh, a lot of people came and, and they enjoyed the induction ceremony and, and then we moved it to Nashville. As we started to have the induction ceremonies in Nashville, more and more folks come and more TV cameras and more mm -hmm. outdoor writers come and started writing about the event and, and everyone realized that this was, this didn't just belong to me as the founder of the Legends of the Outdoors, this belonged to all the folks that was going into the Hall of Fame and those uh, that would be forever in Boston in the Hall of Fame. So we don't take lightly what we get to do for these people. They've done so much for us. They've allowed all of us to follow in their footsteps and they've opened doors for us to walk through that wouldn't have necessarily gotten open had it not been for great folks like Harold Knight, David Hale, and so, so many more. I think you counted them the other day. We've got 140. 140. 140 members. Some of those have passed on. Some of them have been inducted posthumously. And others, just like this year, when we had our Hall of Fame induction ceremony in Springfield, Missouri, went into the Hall of Fame. Uh, and each and every person that's in there is so very deserving. Uh, some of the folks that are in there are regional celebrities. Yeah. Some of them are national celebrities, but they all have walked in the light of, of the outdoors industry and given of themselves way more than they ever received. And so that's what's really neat about the Hall of Fame. And you know, now your generation is coming to the Hall of Fame and, and uh, there's more and more younger people going in the Hall of Fame for the things they've done. I think Alex Rutledge is the youngest person that we've got in the Hall of Fame. And uh, of course, Alex is certainly very well deserving and many more. And later on in some of our episodes, we're gonna have some of our board of directors members with us. We're gonna have some sponsors with us. We're also gonna have many of our outdoor celebrities with us. And some of these folks have got their own television shows. Some of them got their own radio shows. They're outdoor writers. They're, they're hunters and, and fishermen from all walks of our industry. But, but you're gonna see them right here on Legends of the Outdoors TV. We're gonna tell their life story and talk about their careers. I'm excited. You can let it pull back in the. Uh... Oh, yeah. Look there. Oh, another nice crappie here. Fish. Fish on. Good fish. Good fish. Daddy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, beat there. Hold yours up. <laughs> Hold that tiny fish up, Abby. Oh, oh man. Look at that big old thing. What a crappie. Thank you so much for having us out today. Yeah, you bet. And man, what a fabulous day. <laughs> great new way of crappie fishing for me. And I know Abby has yeah. had a great time. You fully exceeded my expectations. So. She's thanked us today. <laughs> she has <laughs> got some catching yeah. up to do. We do. We do. You know what? If I was a fish down there, I'd bite on one of her rods <laughs> too. I wouldn't come over here and bite on one of mine. So, uh, But congratulations, Abby, on your first crappie. And, and Les, once again, thank you so much for having us. Thank you, sir. Glad to have you. Until next time. We'll see you on Legends of the Outdoors TV. This episode was brought to you in part by Hybrid Light. Durable, environmentally friendly, and guaranteed for life. Visit hybridlight.com. And Sheffield Financial, specialized equipment financing for work, play, and everything in between. Visit sheffieldfinancial.com.